Hello YouTube, this is Athir here doing a combat mission modding tutorial. Uh, this has been a little video that's been requested of me a number of times, both in the comments below my videos and also private messaging. Uh, basically I've got a lot of people watching my channel that uh, is new to the series and they see the modded up game that I'm always running just by default. And they say, how do I do it? How do I do it? So uh, basically this video is for those newbies and anyone else getting into combat mission and they want to know how to basically mod the game. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to have run the same minute of action firstly with an unmodded game of Red Thunder and I'm going to run the same minute of action back with a modded version of the game. And then the second part of this video we're going to transfer out into my hard drive and I'm going to run through some rules and basically show you how to do it and also some rules you need to know when you are modding the game. So let's run this turn first. This is as the game appears right out of the box. So you may notice this is from that last battle I recently played uh, my after action report. Uh, it's just a save game I had, good little bit of action so... So I'll try and keep the same uh, same uh, sights and same action in both in both videos. So the Russians are running away there. And of course, keep in mind when I exit the program, load the mods in, and uh, push play again, it could the turn could work out a little bit differently. Always processes that a little bit differently. Okay, so I'll just get one last shot of these buildings too. Okay, so that's how the game looks out of the box. So I'll uh, exit the game and get back in with all the mods reinstalled. And here we are back again, this time in the modded game. You can see the immediate difference with the, the uh, new textures on the tank, the red icons from the Soviets, uh, all those type of mods that I've uh, really gone over in a previous video. I suggest you check that out. Um, we'll run this turn again. the sound difference, some sound mods running. Even new tree bark. And there's the Germans with the modded uniforms with the grime. T-34. Oh! <laughs> Chase that shell. Even the, the gun's getting some love there. Okay, so there's, and just finally I'll just pan across these buildings. These are the, the building mods that are all coming out too. So, a lot, uh, a lot nicer. Even the sandbags. Okay, so that just gives you an indication of the difference. Now, basically the, th those mods installed are the same as my last video, with the exception of a few more that have come out since then. Um, there are new mods coming out, generally for every release. They always follow the weeks after. Um, so there's always something coming out pretty much every day uh, for you to pick and choose. So uh, I'll jump back onto the hard drive and I'll show you all what to do and some rules that you must follow. Okay, here we are on the hard drive, uh, on the desktop, sorry. Um, basically, you can see, there we go, my nice, messy, cluttered desktop. Um, I have all my combat mission games uh, installed on, my, on a second hard drive away from my uh, system drive. Um, so they're all together there. I'll just jump into Red Thunder. Now what you do when you want to start putting mods in there is your standard install. In the data folder, you add a new folder into it called Z. Now the Z folder, it basically, put it simply, tells the game to load whatever's in this folder last and override whatever else is in the, the major data pack, so these big uh, BRZ files here that come with the install of the game. 
Now, um, as modules and updates are released, you'll find more and more BRZs get added to this uh, into this folder. But anything in the Z folder will override whatever's in here. Now, what you can and cannot change when you mod the game. Um, firstly, those thinking you can mod the game like, uh, let's say, popular games like Skyrim or Fallout. I'm only saying those because I'm playing those at the moment. But uh, basically, um, if you think you can change all the settings and how the game actually operates, the answer is no. It is hard-coded in. Uh, that allows, um, that has, sorry, that, uh, yes, yeah, so you can't have a Sherman or a T-34 firing atomic gun, atomic weapons out of its 75mm guns, but uh, you can change everything from the look of the game to the sound of the game, um, as you see there. So anything you see or hear, that's what you change. The other benefit of having that system in place and having all those course game-like systems behind the scenes untouchable is uh, if you mod your game and a, an opponent you're playing a multiplayer with mods their game separately you're not going to have conflicts it's just going to look a little bit different and sound a bit different on each other's monitors so um, so yeah that that's the big rule um, so don't expect go around, don't go hunting for mods which drastically change um, uh, the actual gameplay itself so once you've started, you've, you've created a new Z folder, you dump any mods you download into this, um, and that can get to be a very, very long list. So um, it's always good to have your own little sorting or bit of your own directory in place, like I've done here. Um, so I've got all the, uh, the Aris vehicle packs um, all installed separately. Um, I can unify those and put them all in my own BRZ file, but I just like seeing them. So no, I know which vehicles I've got and make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, and then if you scroll down, you'll notice uh, two things. One, there is some BRZ files, which uh, some modders uh, put their mods back together into those those BRZ uh, content documents, uh, which the game can read. Um, uh, but you can leave it in completely separate, uh, as just as BMPs for visuals and WAV, WAVs for sound. So uh, modders will take care of all that for you. You just have to keep the order in place and follow any instructions in the readme. But mostly, 99% of the time, it means just dumping into this folder here. Make sure it doesn't conflict with any other mods. You'll also notice the Z folders. The Z's in front of the, the folders within the Z folder. The more Z's you add in front, the later it will load. So um, I've, I've got, uh, what's that? I think it's got the most Z's in front. So I'm just that's one I've just recently installed and testing out. So that will always load whatever's in that folder last. So that will override uh, this Z um, and a few other explosions that are scattered through here. So it's a good way to test it. And if you don't like it, you can remove the Zs or delete the folder as such. So it's a, a pretty simple system to use in that respect. Um, other things to worry about, uh, when Battlefront gets around to uh, doing updates or upgrades, um, or even installing new modules, play it safe. Just remove your Z folder from the directory. Um, just dump it somewhere else completely outside of the combat mission install for a bit. Um, so when you install the upgrade, um, or the module, or the update, um, you know, just install on a very clean install. Um, and I always like to just play it for a safe even further and just load the game up once before I go and reinstall all my mods. Sometimes you will notice, especially with the upgrades, uh, sometimes the mods will no longer work. Sometimes they've changed the, uh, the hard coding about what the game actually looks for in textures and sounds for certain situations. But usually there's an update from the modders um, that come out comes out very quickly or the community actually finds that out for them. So... Um, a good example would be uh, when Battle for Normandy and the 2.0 upgrade was released. Um, I know a lot of the uniforms, uh, so the infantry uniforms, were completely out of whack and didn't really work anymore. I think they changed something behind the scenes there. So um, you had to sort of wait, or you had to go back and do the hard work yourself um, to actually make sure it all lines up again. But uh, that's uh, that's for the experienced guys, even beyond my skill. I'm not an artist or a, or a modder myself, so uh, you have to sort of... Uh, Give many, many thanks to your community of modders. Um, I think that is the really, really basic rules. Um, the only other thing is, as I said, give lots and lots of praise to the modding community. Uh, when they do release something, uh, you, you know, they, it's a lot of hard work for them. Um, I'm sure they get their own reward. They get to really um, see what the game and hear what the game sounds in their mind and they get to share that with you. But still, um, I... You can't say don't. You, you got to really, um, yeah. What can I say? You really got to thank them immensely. Uh, I'm just looking through my list here, and oh, sorry. One last thing is the varieties. So, um, 
Here we go. So this is a whole bunch of faces that gets modded. Um, this is for the Soviet soldiers. I've got um, Aris's uh, dirty faces. There we go. Nice dirty face for you. So, but I also like. Um, I think it was Vane did these. These more cleaner faces. Okay. What you can actually do uh, for a number of items, and not all of them. I don't. I don't think you can do it for all the vehicles, for instance. But uh, you can do it for the uh, uniforms. Um, and faces like this is uh, basically add numbers on afterwards. So um, basically, as long as you've got a consistent row of numbers at the end of each name, it should randomly pick a, a soldier from this, uh, when it's looking for textures, pick one of these faces out in this instance. So um, you'll see if I, load, if I load up the game again and actually showed you some detail, look at my future videos um, and you'll probably see a mixture of uh, dirty soldiers and slightly wounded soldiers like this guy. Um, but you'll also see, uh, where, 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 there we go, you might also see something more cleaner faces like this. So you get a nice variety. You can't really pick out, you can't really tell them, tell the game to uh, focus more on this one or more on that one. Um, maybe duplicating the BMP files could be an option and just doing your own number coding. But uh, that is another option to add increased variety to the game uh, in that respect. Especially for the infantry, which I think do deserve a little bit of a variety considering all the lead that gets thrown at them in, in the game itself. Um, so there you go, that's a very quick overview for the newbies to get involved. So the big tips, don't expect atomic weapons coming out of the Shermans. Two, the Z folder. And uh, and three, um, basically be careful when you update and upgrade. Um, make Just keep the, the mods separate to any, any of that processes. Oh, and also, of course, thank you, modding community. Okay, guys, well, uh, thanks for watching. Hope that's any questions, leave them below or get in contact with me. Uh, like, subscribe and all that jazz like usual, and uh, I'll see you again real soon.